Hi, I'm going to show you how to use the Nernst equation. So the Nernst equation allows us to calculate the cell potential um, when we're at non-standard conditions. So let me give you just a little bit of background as we begin. Uh, remember that the cell potential is going to be related to two things. It's going to be related to the concentrations of uh, your reactants and products, and it's also related to the temperature, okay? Notice the Nernst equation is going to bring both of those items in. Um, second, I want to remind you of standard conditions. So standard conditions are going to be one bar that's really close to one ATM, 1.01 bar equals one ATM, 25 degrees C, and you know that that's 298.15 K, and one molar. So this is interesting. When we start with our two half cells, and you've seen this, you know, you have the two half cells, here's your electrode, you connect this, there's your salt bridge. When we start, we're going to start at one molar. But as soon as you turn that on and ions begin to go from an ion to a metal or from a metal to an ion, immediately the potential is going to change because the molarity changes. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, let's look at uh, the Nernst equation. So I would like to do some labeling on this for you. Notice this E does not have the naught. So this is going to be potential at non-standard conditions. So potential at non-standard, non-standard conditions. Now we can predict um, if the potential decreases or increases um, based on what our, our non-standard conditions are to um, know how to just predict that really fast, watch that video under the redox electrochemistry playlist, okay? Um, but this, I'm actually going to show you how to use the formula itself. E naught, this is going to be potential at standard conditions, standard conditions. So you need to know how to find that. And I'll uh, give you some video references for that in just a minute. R, this is going to be our gas constant. Now be careful on this. We are dealing with voltage. And remember, voltage is related to energy. A little reminder, joules equals a volt, time, a volt times a coulomb. So potential is volts, energy is joules. So you have to use the 8.314 joules divided by mole times Kelvin. Whenever you see R, you're thinking, okay, am I dealing with pressure or am I dealing with energy? Definitely dealing with energy. So you have to use the 8.314. T, of course, is going to be our temperature. And temperature because of that gas constant has to be in Kelvin. And this is interesting. I want you to put a star in your notes. This is the, not just number of moles. When we see N, you think, oh yeah, number of moles. N is moles of electrons. It's how many electrons total are lost or gained, okay? So this is going to be mole of electrons lost, gained. So let's say that you lose two electrons N would be two. Now, when you lose two electrons, it means that something gains two electrons. Don't add those together. It's not two lost plus two gained. No, they're the same two electrons. The two that are lost are the same two that are gained. Um, so you, that's why I put a backslash. It's the number of moles lost or gained because they're the same number. They're the same electrons. Um, F, this is Faraday's constant. It's really cool. Faraday's constant. And here it is. It's 96,485 um, coulombs for every one mole of electrons. So if we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 electrons, wow, a whole mole of electrons. Um, sometimes they'll call that an acre of electrons. If you have a mole of electrons, it's charge, coulombs. Total charge for one mole of electrons is 96,485 coulombs. That's the charge. Now Q, you will remember Q from doing equilibrium. This is going to be the ratio of products over reactants at some point, okay, at some given time. And so Q is going to be product over reactant ratio at some time, okay, um, at some non-standard condition. All right, so I have an example up here to help you walk through this. Um, it can be a little bit of work. Here's our example. We're going to have an aluminum nitrate, its concentration is 0.025, um, and of course we're going to have an aluminum electrode, and then we're going to have um, our other half cell be an iron two nitrate, 
and its concentration is 0.5. And of course, in this half cell, you would also have an iron electrode. Um, and it's at 25 degrees C. They say determine the potential. Determine the potential. So the first thing that we have to do is find this potential. Okay, um, I know that this aluminum, that's going to be the Al3+, plus, and I know that iron is the Fe2+, plus when it dissolves in the concentration. So I go to a standard reduction potential table. Let me say that again. I go to a standard reduction potential table and I look up these half reactions. Um, now this is going to be for a voltaic cell. I want to know the potential for a volta voltaic cell. And if they don't say it outright, assume that it's voltaic, galvanic, that you want a positive E. Um, so I look up the values, discover that aluminum is the most negative, so I flip that to oxidation. Then I take my two half reactions and I add them together. Now, if all of that is new to you, I want you to go to my um, Redox Electrochemistry playlist and watch two videos. I want you to watch um, how to calculate the E value, how to calculate standard reduction potential, and I want you to watch how to balance half reactions, okay? Um, so me going to the standard reduction potential table, I'm going to write down the balanced Redox reaction and the calculated potential. And again, if you don't know how to do that, go watch those two videos and we'll teach you how to do that. Um, this is what we're going to have. And this is the balanced redox reaction. We're going to have two moles of aluminum plus three moles of our iron two yield three moles of iron plus two moles of aluminum ion. The aluminum is losing electrons being oxidized. So I flipped that E value when I added this together iron is gaining electrons. So when I add my two potentials for the two half reactions, at standard conditions, the cell potential is 1.22 volts. So I found that right here, okay? I have the E value for the standard conditions, which are one bar, 25 degrees C, and one molar, okay? So now I want to find, well, since I'm not at one molar, okay, that's what clues me in that I have to use the Nernst equation is that I'm not at standard conditions. I'm not at one molar. I've got to use the Nernst equation. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. So E, potential at non-standard conditions, will equal my E naught, 1.22, the value um, at standard conditions, minus R, 8.314, joules divided by mole times Kelvin times temperature. Uh, 25 degrees C is going to be 298.15 Kelvin divided by, okay, the number of electrons that were transferred, it's six, it's six. Let me show you just really, really quick here. I'm going from a zero to a plus three. One aluminum is going to lose three electrons, but I've got two aluminums times that by two, and that gives me six electrons. If you didn't know how to um, do that, again, watch how to balance half reactions, and you'll know how to figure out the number of electrons. So I'm really, really careful with this. It's not moles. I'm not writing down molar coefficients. This is moles of electrons lost. I lost six electrons, and the iron gained six electrons. So this is going to be six moles of electrons, really, really important. That N, again, I put a star by it, moles of electrons, have confetti shoot out of your notes to remind you. Times Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs divided by mole of electron. Times the natural log of Q. Well, let's look at Q for a second. I'm gonna come back up here to my, let me erase that, it looks a little messy. I'm going to come back to my uh, rebalanced redox reaction. Remember, Q is just products of our reactants. Um, so let's do that. Q is going to be products. We don't use solids. So I'm not going to use that solid iron, that solid aluminum. We only use aqueous and gases. So it's going to be the aluminum ion. And you'll recall when we're doing Q, the coefficient is the exponent. Be careful, it's maybe been a little while since you've done equilibrium. The coefficient is the exponent. So it's aluminum ion squared divided by iron two is my aqueous. And that is cubed because we have a three coefficient. So let's plug that in. We're going to get the natural log of the concentration of aluminum right there, 0 0.025 squared 
divided by the concentration of iron, point five, oops, excuse me, point five zero, and that is going to be cubed. Wow. Okay. Now, I want to look at units with you, and then we'll do the math. So, we are going to have mole of electron cancel with mole of electron, Kelvin cancel with Kelvin. Now, check this out. I have a joule and a coulomb. You'll recall joules equals volts times coulombs. Well, if I solve for volts, volts equals joule divided by coulomb. So, that joule divided by coulomb is a volt which is whoop, a potential. So this is going to end with on this unit, joules, or excuse me, volts, V right here, volts per mole, volts, nice. Um, and then of course over here, Q is unit less. Okay, so when you um, square and cube, divide, you're going to get 0 0.005, take the natural log of that, we multiply all of this. Now it's kind of interesting, uh, when you take the natural log of um, 0 0.005, it's a negative number. So negative times negative gives you a positive. Once you multiply all of this, here's what it looks like. E equals 1.22 volts plus 0 .02, 0 0.023 volts. So we add that together, E is going to be 1.24. Um, that's just running for six six volts. That's our answer. So the voltage is actually a little bit higher. Kind of interesting. At standard conditions, here's my potential. Remember, I, I used the river example. Here's my potential top of the mountain, bottom of the mountain. The potential pushes electrons down. Well, at not this, these particular non-standard conditions, the potential's higher. It's a little bit higher. It's the 1.24. Okay, so that is how you use the Nernst equation. Again, to predict if the cell potential is greater or less than the standard potential, watch that video. If you need help, going back to balancing um, or calculating on the E value for half reactions, go back and watch those videos. Good work, pretty impressive. Um, have a wonderful day and good luck with what you're doing. Thanks.